Welcome to my course, Game Development Basics, Week 5, Lesson 2, Ship Movement. Now, because our game is a little bit different than any game we've made before, the setup is going to be slightly different as well. The player in our game is the player camera, but we want the player camera to be static, and we want the player to be able to move a ship throughout the level. So to do this, we're going to set up a ship controller class that will allow the player to move the ship without moving the camera. And then once this is done, we'll be able to set up our ship's movement. So let's start by creating that ship controller. Here in my blueprints folder, I'm going to right click and create a new blueprint class. And this will be a player controller class. And we'll call this BP ship controller. And here in our player camera class on begin play, let's spawn a ship controller into the level and then we'll create a reference to it. Now let's get that reference and let's drag off that and type possess. And the possess node takes two inputs. It takes a controller input and a pawn. So we're saying we want to use a controller to control a pawn in our level. And here we have our controller already there and the pawn we want to control is the player's ship. And this is the part where it's going to get a little bit tricky. When we use our input mappings, we need to send a command to our ship controller and then the ship controller will actually be able to move the ship. So I think the best way to do this is to create three events in our ship controller that are similar to these events. Now in our player camera, let's get a reference again to our ship controller and then call that event. Now we're using the input mapping that we set up and then we're calling the same event on our ship controller. And with the move ship up and move ship right, we want to have a reference again to this axis value from the input mapping. So let's create an input and it'll be a float. And I actually think we don't need this one on our ship controller, the fire main weapon. We'll do that through the ship. So I'm going to delete that one and we'll compile. Now let's drag a print string. And so let's get a reference to our ship controller and then call the same event, move ship up and drag the access into the input. And we'll do the same for move ship right. Now when we press the W key, we should get ones, S should get minus ones, D should get a one and A should get minus ones. So now we know this is set up correctly. From our player camera class, we're using the input mapping and we're getting a reference to our ship controller and passing that value in to a similarly named event on the ship controller. And then the ship controller is taking that input and currently it's a print string. But what we'll actually do next is set this up to move the ship. Here in our ship controller, let's create another custom event. And we'll call this possess ship. And this will have an input of a player ship. And here in our player camera class, let's delete this. And let's call this here instead. So possess ship will take an input of a player ship and it will call possess on that pawn and the target here will be self. Now in our player camera from ship controller, let's drag off and type possess ship. And now we're possessing it through the ship controller class. And a benefit of doing it this way is now we can get a reference to this and create a variable called player ship on the ship controller. And we'll need this variable because we want to be able to move it using these events. So let's get a reference to player ship and let's type 
add movement input. And from this player ship, let's say get forward vector. For now, we'll just use the root and we can drag that in here. And then the scale will be this up. So now we have our move ship up going to add movement input of our player ship. And that's getting the root component and then the forward vector as the world direction and the scale value will be the up that was passed from our player camera input. Now, there is one mistake that I made earlier in the video that we'll have to correct before this works. If we go back to our player ship, we actually need to set the parent class to character. And we can do this by going to class settings and then for parent class, set this to character. This will add the character movement component, which we need in order to use this add movement input. And now when we press W, our ship will move forward. And when we press S, it moves backward. So let's do the same for A and D. And now our ship can move in all four directions, but the camera view stays the same. One thing though, is if we go to the top, we can actually move off the screen and we're actually still moving around up there. And this works on all four sides. We can go to the left and move far beyond and then come back. So we need to set some type of constraint that'll restrict the player's movement to the viewport. And we'll take care of this in the next lesson.